Hi everybody, this is Dr. Chitra, your mentor at Study Medic and Study MRCOG. And we are back with our back to back series for all of you, those who are appearing for MRCOG part three exams. I hope this video is helpful to you to clear this exam. Today in this video, we are going to talk about how to approach a station on maternal medicine. I'm sorry if this video is going to be a little bit of a theoretical one, but as you know, maternal medicine is one uh, station in which it's really going to test your theoretical knowledge. So basically what cases to expect in maternal medicine? What are the type of cases? So you would either get someone who has come in for a preconceptional counseling, or you would get a woman who has come for a booking visit sent by her GP or the midwife, or someone who has come for an antenatal visit. Very rarely, you would get someone uh, for intrapartum care or someone who plans, uh, someone who has come to plan her mode of birth and the timing of birth. But these are very rare type of cases. Now, in all type of cases, you are going to be tested on your information gathering, communication skills, either with patients and relatives or with colleagues and patient safety and applied clinical knowledge. Now, in different types of cases, you are the expectations from you are going to be a little bit different. So preconceptional counseling. Whenever the woman comes to you, you are expected to tell her what is the effect of pregnancy on the condition effect of that particular condition on the pregnancy, how you are going to optimize her health before she embarks on this pregnancy. And if time permits, you can talk about antenatal care as well. Remember maternal medicine uh, cases, they are a little bit of a lengthy cases. The good part is here that they will not be having any hidden agenda because you really have a lot of things that you want to tell them. Now coming to an antenatal or a booking visit. So here basically you have to know everything about the condition. And for an antenatal or a booking visit, the expectation from you would be that you have to tell the leader how the antenatal care is going to be, who all is going to be involved in her care, what exactly you are going to do for her in the antenatal care, what extra type of investigations would be done, how frequently she would come in for the antenatal visit, and for the baby, how you are going to care, like extra growth scans or some extra investigations for the baby, what exactly is going to be done. Then you also have to talk about her intrapartum management. So basically the place of birth, the mode of birth, whether a vaginal birth is contraindicated or it is, it is indicated, and the time pain management during labor, any type of drugs that are contraindicated and how labor is going to be. Okay, whether you are going to induce her early or you would allow her to go to term pregnancy. Like a woman who is having type 1 or type 2 diabetes, you know, you have to induce her any time between 37 to 38 plus 6 weeks of pregnancy whereas someone who has GDM and she is well controlled you can allow her labor to go up to 40 plus 6 weeks of pregnancy. Now, you also have to tell her about the postpartum period, what exactly she has to expect in the postpartum period, whether the condition that she has, she is going to get a relapse of the condition, and what about contraception, which are the drugs that she can safely use as a contraceptive, and which are the ones that are going to be contraindicated for her. Also in the postpartum period, any drug that you have stopped for her during pregnancy, whether she can go back to those drugs again. Okay. Now cases where very rarely you would have someone in the intrapartum period or someone who has come to you to plan for mode of birth. Um, you should know what specific measures you have to take during labor for these women like vaginal delivery is it indicated whether she can attempt a vaginal birth after a cesarean section what is the type of pain relief that you can offer her whether continuous electronic fetal monitoring is indicated how are you going to cut short the second stage of labor and what would be the effect of labor on the baby whether labor is going to be very stressful for the baby and you would directly offer her a planned cesarean section and of course in the postpartum period 
how the postpartum period is going to be what the medications are going to be there for all these women of course you also have to counsel about venous thromboembolism now what are the type of cases to expect so basically any system in the body so the most common ones nowadays renal is a hot favorite so it could be either a woman who has undergone a renal plant transplant or someone who has chronic kidney disease due to any cause so they can come either for preconceptional counseling or they can come for a booking visit also alport syndrome has appeared in some of the exams connective tissue disorders is something which is more common and here you would get someone with sle or someone with marfan syndrome diabetes mellitus and thyroid problems more commonly um, hyperthyroidism or someone with graves disease uh, in the gastrointestinal tract ulcerative colitis crohn's disease sometimes you might get intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy sickle cell disease sometimes thalassemia bleeding disorders like von willebrand's disease or someone with hemophilia very rarely thrombocytopenia it could be either idiopathic or gestational these are from hematology neurology yes epilepsy is something which is very common because that is something that you are going to see in your clinic every day uh, a patient with spina bifida and who is now pregnant they have appeared in the exam sometimes cardiovascular system is another system which is very commonly involved so anyone with cardiomyopathy any type of congenital cardiac disease or sometimes hypertension having an effect on the heart infections in pregnancy so someone with cmv chickenpox herpes hiv hepatitis or syphilis these are all very common asthma sometimes you might get and musculoskeletal disorders like arthritis which is affecting like chronic pelvic girdle pain she has come to you to discuss her mode of birth she is demanding an elective cesarean section this could sometimes also appear in the exam so now how do you approach each domain because basically you are going to be marked on each domain so information gathering information gathering is basically how you are going to obtain a good history from the patient uh, everything about her condition and not only that what are the type of investigations that you are going to ask for her and how you are going to interpret these investigations how you are going to act on them also the past medical history and surgical and obstetric history this is common for all type of stations it's not only about what you are going to ask the woman information that is given in the gp letter or the investigations that are given to you in candidate instructions they also constitute a part of information gathering so you have to acknowledge whatever is given in your candidate instructions as well communication with patients and relatives this is if you have a simulated patient task you are going to be judged whether you are judgmental or non judgmental remember do not show your emotions at any point of time you always have to show a lot of empathy communicate effectively with patients or their relatives about the disorder how it is going to affect the pregnancy and vice versa okay communication with colleagues yes especially if it is a structured discussion or even if it is a simulated patient task because how you are going to formulate a good multidisciplinary team for them uh, to how that team is going to take care of the woman in pregnancy and how you are going to form a management plan all this basically constitutes how you are going to communicate with your colleagues patient safety is something which is very important in all kind of stations here in maternal medicine they would be marking you on whether you recognize the consequence of this particular condition on the pregnancy and the fetus you have to know what is going to be the effect of pregnancy on the condition and you have to know the importance of pre pregnancy counseling because here it is important for you how you are going to optimize the health of this woman before she embarks on a pregnancy and most importantly the safety of drugs in pregnancy and breastfeeding 
like supposing you have a woman who has sickle cell disease and she has come to you for pre-pregnancy counseling but she is on hydroxyurea so you have to recognize that hydroxyurea is a drug that is not safe in pregnancy you also have to know the washout period of that drug so you have to counsel the woman that she has to stop hydroxyurea three months prior to conception and not only stop the drug but she has to be on a good contraceptive during the washout period so you have to send her to the specialist to stop the drug she has to be on any alternative drug that is safe for her and also refer her to the contraceptive clinic because she has to be on some good contraceptive okay applied clinical knowledge is very important in maternal medicine here you have to use all the evidence that is there all the evidence that is available to you to you plan the pregnancy the pre-pregnancy period and also antenatal intrapartum and postpartum period so applied clinical knowledge is very important in maternal medicine stations a few do's and don'ts during maternal medicine okay so very commonly you would have a woman who is uh, either come to you for preconceptional or she has come to you at the booking visit now this woman she is on the regular dose of folic acid but she requires high dose of folic acid in this pregnancy like a woman uh, who has ulcerative colitis we know for these women you have to give them high dose of folic acid so as an st5 you can immediately tell her that yes i will write a prescription for you for high dose folic acid please do not refer her to the consultant or to the specialist for a prescription of high dose of folic acid as opposed to that you have a woman she is on a drug which is not safe in pregnancy okay um say she is on lisinopril okay she has hypertension and she is on lisinopril and she has come to you her pregnancy test is positive she has come to you for a consultation uh you would not stop the drug immediately for her you would either refer her to the specialist or to your consultant and under guidance of the specialist or the consultant you will write an alternative prescription for her okay whereas a woman for whom urgent investigations are needed like someone with hyperemesis gravidarum and you want to know um, her ketones in urine or you want to know her serum electrolytes so do not tell her okay i will refer you to the specialist or to the consultant you can immediately order the investigations yourself or someone uh, who has come to you in sepsis you want to do her blood culture you want to know her lactate level you want to know her use and ease for this you will not refer her to the consultant or the specialist you will order the investigations immediately as opposed to that there is a woman who has come to you uh like she is pregnant it is an unwanted pregnancy and she is demanding a termination of pregnancy definitely you have to counsel the woman about everything about the procedure like how the procedure is going to be done what are the advantages what are the disadvantages what are going to be the complications during the procedure okay what would be the like something anything trauma to the uterus or to the cervix everything you have to tell her do not assure her that the procedure would be done immediately for the procedure to be done you will refer her to your consultant or to the specialist and only then the procedure would be done okay now there is something like many of us have the habit of telling the patient that i would like to examine you so remember in part 3 usually you are not expected to examine the patient okay even if you want to examine the patient remember you will examine her in the presence of a chaperon if you are going to examine her you have to tell her what you want to examine like you want to know her pulse you want to know her blood pressure you want to see whether she is pale or not you want to have a feel of her tummy and once you have examined her always make it a point to tell her what are the examination findings just uttering that okay i want to examine and i want to see this 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 that it's not going to give you any extra points but you if you have a structured discussion then you can always tell the examiner that yes 
uh, I would like to examine the woman or some investigations that you want to be done you can tell the uh, you can tell that to the examiner and if those investigations or the examination is really indicated you would get the examination findings back from the examiner but for a patient simulated task please do not just utter for the sake of uttering that i want to examine the patient you are not going to get any extra points for that and in fact you would be losing your precious time you only have 10 minutes for the task and you would be losing definitely uh, at least 20 to 25 seconds saying you want to examine what you want to examine and it's going to be a waste of time okay so these are the things that you would be doing or what is expected from you in maternal medicine now these are a few templates that i have made for you for pre pregnancy counseling and anyone comes to you for a booking visit it's not mandatory that you have to follow the same template it is just um, something for you as a guide you can make your own templates okay uh, so someone who has come to you for a pre pregnancy counseling introduction and greeting the patient confirming her identity it is something that is common to all type of patients you uh, uh, cases also setting up of the agenda that is common to everything uh, now for pre pregnancy counseling in her history basically confirm her age enquire what is her general health at present she has come to you with a particular condition so for how long does she have the condition how is she coping up with that what is the treatment that she is having how the condition is affecting her quality of life who is looking after her right now whether it is a gp or it is a specialist and what is the control of the condition at present okay it is pre pregnancy counseling so it's perfectly fine to ask her about her menstrual history about her cervical screening obstetric history any previous pregnancies that she has had what was the outcome of those pregnancies besides the particular condition that she has come to you for does she have any other medical condition any surgeries in the past family history whether anyone else in the family is affected by the same condition or any other conditions which are of significance allergies is something that you should not be missing out in any station habits always remember to sign post before you ask for any habits so alcohol smoking any drugs and if she confirms that yes she drinks alcohol or she is smoking just don't leave it at that address it there and then tell her how alcohol or smoking or any recreational drugs that she use how they are bad not only for her general health but how they are going to affect her pregnancy offer her stop smoking services or how to stop alcohol okay most important for pre pregnancy counseling what is the type of contraception she is using and whether it is a reliable contraceptive or not okay now next coming to the most important part the medical condition so you have to tell her how this condition is going to affect her pregnancy how pregnancy is going to affect her condition and she would ask you or even if she doesn't ask you what are going to be the implications on the fetus like what is going to be the genetic predisposition like supposing she is a case of sickle cell disease you have to ask about her partner whether the partner has been screened or not and whether uh, like how the fetus is going to be affected okay then you have to tell her about how the pregnancy is going to be managed it would be in a multidisciplinary team what extra care is going to be given in the antenatal period how the interpartum period is going to be postnatal whether breastfeeding is safe or not and the type of contraception that she is going to have and also the course of the disease in the postpartum period you have to advise her to start folic acid before she embarks on this pregnancy any change in medications that have to be done okay of course after discussion with the specialist what baseline investigations have to be done before she embarks on the pregnancy and general advice about smoking alcohol vaccines smears uh, a healthy life how she is going to optimize her weight and good contraception besides this any other concerns that she has you always have to address that before you in the consultation 
at the end of the consult you have to advise her that please continue your contraceptive or <coughs> use another contraceptive that is reliable you have uh, to book her for her an appointment with her specialist you have to start for her folic acid if necessary high dose folic acid and advise her that once a urine pregnancy test is positive she has to come for a booking visit at the earliest okay so this is about pre pregnancy or a preconceptional counseling now a booking template how would it be like this is remember this is just a general outline it's going to be different for each and every case or each of you would be having your own thoughts about it but please make sure that you include all these points okay introduction and agenda is going to be the same for all cases now history whether this is a first pregnancy if she has had previous pregnancies what were the pregnancies like what was the antenatal period intrapartum and what was the outcome okay now the present pregnancy how has been the present pregnancy uh, till now ethnicity yes sometimes because some ethnicities are prone to certain type of conditions now a particular medical condition that she has explore the condition how it started for how long and for what type of medicines she is on and what is the control at present allergies surgical history family history do a vte risk scoring right now whether she has history of vte in the pregnancy what is her bmi at present blood group rh type any reservations for blood transfusion remember very important for any antenatal case habits always sign post before asking for alcohol smoking or drugs what is the type of support that she gets at home and occupation because sometimes her type of occupation uh, is going to have an effect on her pregnancy now the current medical condition how it is going to affect her pregnancy and how pregnancy will affect the condition what is the current situation like how is the pregnancy how is the condition at present she is in the relapse or she is in the remission if she is something with a chronic kidney disease what exactly are her renal parameters at present that is the type that you would want to know now any recent tests that have been done so blood investigations mainly Uh, those who are having any cardiovascular problems whether the heart has been assessed or not and an, or an ultrasound like a renal transplant patient whether the transplanted kidney what is the ultrasound of the transplanted kidney now who is looking after her very important her gp would always be in the loop when was the last time that she visited her specialist the current drugs that she is on her dosage and you have to know whether these medicines are safe in pregnancy or not you will counsel her about the management antenatal intrapartum and postpartum after you tell her all these things you have to address any other concerns that she has and at the closure you will arrange for a follow up with the specialist or with your consultant okay and also don't forget to give her patient information leaflets a specialist nurse who would be looking after her during the antenatal period and give her 24/7 emergency contact numbers okay so these are the things that you are expected um, to be covering in any maternal medicine uh, cases thank you so much for watching the video and i hope the video is helpful to you and we are going to come back with uh, similar videos for all the type of cases that you can expect in your part 3 exams so good luck to all of you and i hope all of you do well in your exams okay happy studying till then bye bye and take care